He was so calm up here, no nerves at all. Really <laughs> impressive, I liked it. Okay, next one, coming from Singapore, we have Better Data. Presenting for Better Data is Kevin Yi, founder and CTO. Come on out, Kevin. Eighty-seven percent of us can be identified with just these three elements alone. This is how vulnerable our data is today. To protect our privacy, regulators around the world have implemented privacy laws, resulting in three billion dollars of fines in just the last five years. And this has caused data privacy to be the biggest challenge for companies to build AI software today. We have spoken to hundreds. Of data and AI teams located in AI startups, enterprises like banks and insurance, and governments, and they all face the same problem. It takes a long time to get access to data. Data is either locked away or they have to go through a long process, including privacy engineering, legal, and security. This slows down innovation a lot. So how can companies? Innovate on data while protecting their customers' privacy. Introducing Better Data, an AI synthetic data platform that allows you to innovate on data in days and not months. We convert private real data into 100% anonymized synthetic data that has the same properties as the real data. We introduce confidential computing. Where you can compute on encrypted data, so companies don't have to trust us with data because we can't even see it. And lastly, data tokenization. Companies own their data fully, and we have tamper-proof locks for that as well. Move the demo, please. The very first step is to upload data into our data warehouse. Data is encrypted using a private key and then tokenized into a data token. That token belongs to the company, so only the company can read or download their customer data. The first step to producing synthetic data is to grant better data access to compute a synthetic data job on the customer data. But at no point in time does better data have access to read or download the data set itself. And this process can take anywhere from a few minutes. To a few hours, depending on the size of the dataset. But what's more interesting is how companies can collaborate on datasets together and understand more about their combined and common customers, all while the data remains encrypted for all parties involved. Let's imagine there's two banks looking to collaborate on their customers together. Bank one. Has the spending patterns of their customer, while Bank Two has the balance of their customer. By putting these two datasets together, they have a more holistic understanding of their customer's financial profile, and can better give investment plan decisions. So Bank One will submit a collaboration request to Bank Two, and Bank Two will accept that collaboration request, and the encrypted data from both banks will go into the confidential computing environment. Combined together, and a synthetic data will be produced and sent back to both banks. So now, with the combined synthetic data, both banks have a better understanding of their customer and can serve them better. Every single synthetic data we produce comes with a quality assurance report, and this ensures that synthetic data can be used just like the real data for your analytics, for your machine learning. The table to the top shows models that is trained on real data, and the table below shows models that is trained on synthetic data. And we can see that the performances are very similar to each other. Move the slides, please. So now, companies are able to access data in days and not months, retain full ownership over their data, and safely collaborate with others. All while their customer data remains encrypted to all parties involved. We have a licensing and support business model, 
and we support on-premise, private, and public cloud. You can either use our APIs, integrate it directly into your data science pipelines, or the web interface, which I just showed earlier. We also have a community version coming up end of this year, so do sign up. In two years' time, most of our AI models will be trained using synthetic data. We are in a fast-moving market with 160 million today, and it's going to be a billion dollars in just five years. We currently have five pilots in production, including a tier one bank and a Fortune 200 company. And we work very closely with regulators to ensure that our synthetic data is privacy safe to use. And our technology has been validated with two multi-year R&D grants with the National University of Singapore to start an AI lab. We are a team of nine with security, AI, and ethical hacking backgrounds. And we have a combined experience of 50 years in academia as well as industry. And we are the people to protect your data. If you're a data team or an AI team that is frustrated with how long it takes to share or access your data, don't let data slow you down. Go synthetic and come talk to us. Sign up for our product today. Thank you. Hey, can we start with you? Sure. Um, how are you planning on doing pricing? Is this going to be like a liability-based model, or how, how do you anticipate that working? So at the start, it will be a licensing and support model. We will deploy our solution on the premise, and that's because when it comes to data, especially enterprises' customers' data, it tends to be the most sensitive. So we'll start with that first, build value, build trust, and once we do that, then we'll move them over to our cloud software that is more scalable. So in both cases, it will be a monthly subscription fee. Great, thank you. Peter? <laughs> no, it's pop quiz style. <laughs> um, that's good. Um, how do you think about like, the, the ideal kind of profile of the buyer? Is it a, is it a CISO at a, at a large bank? Um, just, I'm, I'm curious about how you kind of enter and start the conversation, knowing how hard it is to sell into you know, Fortune 100 Fortune 500 companies? So we mostly start with the data teams. Okay. And largely, we work with enterprises that are really big, okay. collect a lot of data about their consumers or customers, and they are in highly regulated industries. Okay. So finance, healthcare, governments. Got it. And it's not always a straightforward way to get directly into the data team or the head of it. So sometimes you have to go through a path, but usually that's when we make the sale. Got it. Thanks. Thank you. Nicole? Thanks. How computationally intensive is the process, and how much of an edge do you have there over the best solutions? Mm -hmm. So in terms of speed, this is not one of the biggest concerns when it's producing synthetic data, because generally speaking, uh, real-time use cases don't really use synthetic data. Generally speaking, we are trying to build a synthetic data set so we can train a machine learning model, not really a real-time process. But in terms of, um, so that's speed, is there another question which you have? That, that's good, thank okay, you. Awesome. Got it, all right, Allison? How, how much is the need for this individual companies or the partnerships you were talking about? And then are you guys trying to broker those partnerships or is that one of your main selling points? Because you talked a lot about that as mm -hmm. an opportunity. So I'd love to hear more about that market. Mm -hmm. So synthetic data alone can already broker partnerships, even without having that confidential computing environment where companies can combine their data sets together. Mm -hmm. So some of the existing use cases that we have include evaluating external vendors. So companies, big companies, they evaluate about 500 to 1,000 vendors every year. And sharing data to third-party vendors is always a tricky process, but it's a necessary process to ensure that whatever they are buying works inside the company. Great. Mariana? So I completely concur with your thesis that synthetic data is a natural evolution for almost anyone who's trying to build novel models. But a couple of other people have figured the same strategy. And so there's a few dozen companies out there today across different verticals who are endeavoring to create novel, interesting synthetic data sets. Why would a customer choose to work with better data over a potential other player? So with our five pilots, we realized that synthetic data cannot be used to just create generic synthetic data for all use cases. There needs to be a feedback loop between what the synthetic data is used for. And there's always downstream models that is trained on synthetic data. And when we create just a generic synthetic data, it doesn't work. 
That's why we have a feedback loop between our synthetic data engine as well as downstream machine learning models of our customers. So we work very closely with them to create this feedback loop where we create better and better synthetic data for their specific models. And we save these parameters, and that's what keeps us sticky as well. How do you not... Sorry, can I ask another question? Um, how, how do you not accidentally introduce bias by... With, within a feedback system, then, then you're trapped in the loop of the system, which is the system's asking something of that data. You're in some continuous learning process giving it an answer to tune it. But then eventually, the company will run on real data, which now it's been trained on a synthetic data set that's tuned to the AI model. Like, Have, have you actually done a full life cycle where uh, one of your pilots has actually then gone and run your al their algorithms on real life data sets of their existing customers and said, yeah, these mar models still work with fidelity? So right now, it's still in pilot. But when it comes to test cases, which they have put aside to test this system out, it performs really well. Anything else? Give it up for better data.